Well, the fighting between President Trump and Senator Corker kicked off on Twitter Sunday morning. President Trump began tweeting about the senator who recently announced he would not seek a third term in 2018. Quote, Senator Bob Corker begged me to endorse him for re-election in Tennessee. Wait, wait, I said we'll, we'll no. Just stop. That, that, that was false. The first thing the was president false. president lies this, this repeatedly. Sound, this sounds like we are his invitation to of you to have dinner with him when he lied about that. So first sentence is a lie. Yeah. Corker did not ask for his endorsement. Uh, then I said no, mm -hmm. and he dropped out. Also a lie, according to multiple sources, said he could not win without my endorsement. That also is a lie. Uh, he also wanted to be Secretary of State. I know for a fact that was a lie because I was calling Bob Corker and begging him to, to be, be Secretary, Secretary of State. <laughs> and, 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 and Corker said that it was a possibility, but he met with him and he said it was so awkward. There was no way, Bob Corker said, there's no way I could have worked with him, Joe. I would have I would have been glad to serve my country. It just wouldn't work out. Told me that in real time. Remember that awkward moment on the stage? And he said I was backstage and you know, I just had to tell him, no thanks, it'll never work Note out. Note to the president, someone should have told the president, so not Parker's only, not a stooge, yeah. he's not going to back mm. down to your tweets. You're actually going to just shoot yourself in the foot time and time again, just as you did all day yesterday. Ka and Caddy, this is the thing he doesn't understand. And I mean this, the president, he's, he's just so out of it. He does not understand Adult that center. if you attack Bob Corker, a guy who started a business on his own, became unbelievably successful in his 30s, has always been a success. Um, a, a mayor, you know, a two-term senator, you attack this guy, he's not scared of the, of the president. And he's got nothing to lose. The damage that Donald Trump did additionally to his presidency yesterday is, is uh, unspeakable. He also, guess what? He, he's lost a vote on tax reform. Hmm. He's lost a vote on just about anything. If impeachment does come up, I'm no, I wouldn't be surprised if I'm Bob Corker... I'm seeing the Corker hashtag 25th and Amendment now. If Bob Corker and John McCain and Susan Collins and Lisa Murkowski and Jeff Flake and all of these Republicans that he's going after, if, he, if, if he's, again, not sealing his own fate, and hopefully, there's one or two Republicans out there that I haven't mentioned who said, you know what? This is just too dangerous for our country. I really don't think this man is stable, and I do not think he's fit. And I think we need to start talking about other alternatives. All that, all that unleashed by Donald yeah. Trump. And, you know, it's interesting, Donald Trump repeatedly seems to see the administration as just Donald Trump. He doesn't understand this concept of the idea that his success depends on more than just himself, whether it's Rex Tillerson, whether it's John McCain, whether it's uh, Bob Corker, that he has to keep, whether it's even the mayor of San Juan, you know, doing her job down in Puerto Rico, he sees it very much as himself and a reflection of himself. Um, and I think that is why he gets into this position of alienating other people and thinking that there aren't going to be consequences. I don't know whether Bob Corker was saying that Donald Trump is fit mentally or not to be president of the United States, but he's certainly confident. in that interview with the Sunday Times calling into question his fitness, you know, the prospect that there could be World War III, the fact that he yeah. lies on Twitter, uh, that he runs the presidency like a television show and that the staff are trying to contain him. That is an image of somebody who he doesn't think is fit to be running the White House. And Whether also, or not it's a mental also, definition Caddy, or not, I don't know, but it certainly calls into question his fitness. He also, yeah. Caddy, uh, suggests that Donald Trump does not understand the reality uh, that, that, that spins out of control after some of his, his tweets. And Nick, the Republicans have been warned. They've been warned so many times. I mean, they were, again, I'll go back to that early August show with General Hayden here where we warned Republicans about Donald Trump asking one of the top foreign policy advisors in America three times. If you, could use, if you could use nuclear weapons, and why couldn't? We've got nuclear weapons, why don't we use them? He said basically the same thing on, with Chris Matthews on Hardball before that. We warned him outright, you don't, this, there are dire consequences for electing. And these Republican senators, Bob Corker said, they know.
they see it behind the scenes. He's not fit to be president. And we're in the middle of a nuclear showdown. After three million people die in Seattle, that's too late for the Republicans to say, well, you know what, maybe he's not fit to be president. Right. Well, look, if, just compare uh, Pence and Corker in this last couple of days. Um, if you want to understand the bargain that the Republican Party has backed itself into with this president, mm. you have the vice president participating in what we all recognize as theater. Yeah. The president's theater, his culture war that he wants to wage instead of passing bills. The then you have Senator years. Corker coming out and saying, no, this is lunacy. This is not the way you conduct business. Um, it's not clear to me if we'll see more corkers or fewer corkers in the months ahead, but it's clear that he is channeling what, what, what people in Washington are saying privately. I just want to underscore two things, Joe, you alluded to. First, uh, I think a lot of us, at least I was very sorry when Corker beat our friend Harold Ford, but I think that said, Corker has been a terrific senator. I work closely with him on the auto rescue. He has a lot of friends on the Democratic side of the aisle. He's highly respected. He's not some flake out of left field. Uh, so when he says this stuff, people take it seriously. And secondly, a point you made, I just again reinforce it, this has serious policy implications because he is a critical vote on taxes and on a lot of other mm -hmm. stuff. And he's also a leader of the Senate and people respect him. And, uh, and, and David Ignatius, the most powerful Republican voice on foreign policy. He's, he's chairman of the, of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. He, he has been absolutely crucial in the bargaining over the Iran nuclear deal. To, 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 to start this Twitter war, literally uh, on the eve of launching your Iran policy, um, it just it, it suggests a, a, a president who's just so uh, reactive, so, so focused on, on these uh, kind of uh, vengeance wars against people who criticize him, that he's not thinking about what he's going to need as he rolls out his Iran policy. He needs people in Congress to, to, to say, we support you, Mr. President. Here's how we're going to implement your policy ideas. He needs people who will uh, communicate with other capitals uh, where there's deep uh, consternation about, about these policies. Those are the kind of people who are getting blown off right now. Uh, and, and, you know, uh, Nick, the, the, a couple of New York Times stories yesterday were fascinating uh, regarding, regarding Republicans. Uh, one of them was Frank Bruni mm. saying all the Republicans in the U.S. Senate know that Bannon slash Trump are coming after them and that they're just going to find anybody they can to go after you know, established senators. And so Donald Trump really, at some point, is going to turn more than just four or five or six Republican senators against him. Like, the, he's turning this into an all-out war with the Republican Party. And uh, I don't know what it means. Maybe it means he's just decided he doesn't want to pass legislation. He just <laughs> wants to do PR stunts uh, to, to, to gen up his 32%. You know, I have to say, I think the primary challenges are a different, uh, you know, example here, right? It's clear that, that the Bannon and the forces behind Bannon, who are to some extent the forces behind the president, are trying to reshape the party in his image. They want to be more like President Trump, not less. I think that's a legitimate struggle over what it means to be a Republican. Yeah. It's going to be a pitched battle. Um, but yes, it's going to cost them support. It's going to distract them from what the president says he wants to do. You know. You, uh, um, um, tax reform is one of the hardest things to do in Washington. It just got harder. You need yeah. everybody pulling in the same direction for like a year to get that done. You can't also carry on a guerrilla war against your own party if you want to. I, I've got to say, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's just not going to happen he's now. He's not fit. I mean, he just doesn't even know how to do the math. It, it's just not going to happen right now. Corker, will Corker support that tax reform? No. Corker was saying before all of this, that it was going to be impossible to do. Yeah. Flake, is Flake going to support this when he's working every day to beat Flake? Is he going to give him benefit of the doubt on some really bad elements in this tax policy? No, it's not going to happen. No, and also there's a lot of pushback now on the state and local tax deduction elimination, which was the principal source of revenue for the tax bill. And yeah. so it's got, it's got policy problems as well as political problems. All right. All right, still ahead on Morning Joe. With a wink and a nod, President Trump plays with the prospect of nuclear war. We'll show you what he said and didn't say about North Korea. Plus, the president defends his outreach to Puerto Rico. Oh, my God. Why he's blaming the media 
for not giving proper due to the, quote, beautiful, soft, and very good towels he tossed out to hurricane victims. We'll speak live with Puerto Rico's governor. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube, and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories, and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.